In this video, we will talk why light bends in refraction and what is the physical interpretation of this bending. If I look at this diagram, then light is incident from a real medium into a dense medium such that the refractive index of this medium is less than the refractive index of this medium and the light was supposed to follow this path but it actually bends towards the normal and the angle of bending is theta t. Why this light bends actually? The Snell's law is telling us that the ratio of the incident angle with the transmitted angle or refracted angle is equal to the ratio of their refractive indices but they will be the cross one this is the refractive index of the dense medium and this is of the rare medium now what's the physical phenomenon which is occurring here which bends this light if we look at the internet especially youtube then we find for this bending of light some explanations the very first one is the Fermat's principle. In Fermat principle, actually, the Snell's law is incorporated and the shortest distance is calculated. And that this principle is actually based on the Snell's law that how we can calculate the shortest distance to reach for example a safeguard want to reach to a person who is swimming inside let's say water here so this Fermat's principle is one of the explanation another very prominent explanation for this one is the soldiers soldiers march resemblance you can see the details on the internet that this one is like marching soldiers they are coming in and as they experience a dense medium let's say for example the soldiers experience some mud then they will keep their distance and they will bend and will go like this. So this is one of the explanations. The third explanation here is the explanation of the Hagen. The Hagen's principle are the Hagen's explanation for this one in which we will consider wave fronts and those wave fronts will come in and if we follow the path of their interference here or uh, what we call the diffraction phenomenon which is occurring here then this light will actually bend but unfortunately not only all these explanations are incomplete but they are wrong as well. So if these are not right, then what is the right explanation that why this light bends? We will have to, to understand what physically is happening here. We will have to go back to the Snell's law from where the Snell's law has been derived. The Snell's law is actually from the limitations in Fresnel equations and Fresnel equations are big to the Maxwell equations. So we will start from the Maxwell equations and then we will understand that why this light is bending. So let's start with the Maxwell equations. Maxwell equations. Now we know that in free space in free space the set of maxwell equations are the, the divergence the, the divergence of electric field is 
the charge density divided by the permittivity, the divergence of magnetic field is equal to zero, there is no magnetic charge is there, so it will not diverge. The curling electric field will generate a time varying magnetic field and a curling magnetic field will have a contribution from the current density plus the Ampere's correction which was mu naught, epsilon naught and a time varying electric field. This term the Maxwell correction which we call is displacement current. Now these equations we can move to integral form with the help of the fundamental laws of electrodynamics like the divergence theorem and the curve theorem and I can write the very first one that the closed surface integral which is the electric flux E dot dA will be equal to the enclosed charge divided by epsilon naught and the magnetic flux B dot dA will be equal to zero and similarly this one I can write that a closed path integral is from the Stokes theorem when we will convert this one then this will convert into E dot this is a closed path integral E dot dl and this is equal to minus curly by curly t of b dot dA so it is actually the magnetic flux and this equation will go to closed path integral and b dot dl and this is equal to mu naught i plus mu naught epsilon naught and curly by curly t and this will be the electric flux. So these are actually the integral forms of these differential forms when we write Maxwell equations in free space. When we consider a medium self in a medium we are having the set of Maxwell equations is the divergence of now electric field will be replaced with the electric displacement d epsilon naught will be removed and rho will be replaced by the free charges similarly the divergence of magnetic field it will be equal to zero as usual the third equation will not be changed and it will be del cross E minus curly P over curly T because the varying electric field will generate a varying magnetic field and the fourth equation will change and B will be replaced by its counterpart which is H auxiliary magnetic field and here we will have for the mu naught j we will have only mu naught will be removed and j will be replaced by j f so we are having j f plus no mu naught epsilon naught and this will become curly d the electric displacement over curly t so this set of Maxwell equation is actually in a medium. I just wanted to tell that the equations actually change like this. Now these can be converted into integral form like this that the closed surface integral d dot dA will be equal to Q if enclosed only the free charge enclosed and similarly the other will be changed like this but I'm not going to write all 
those equations, but I will focus only on 